Hey guys, in this video, we're going to do some transaction analysis. Okay, so what I have set up here, I'm using Excel. You can do this in Google Sheets. You can do this on a piece of paper. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just doing it in Excel because it's quicker and it will do the math for me. Um, so I've got um, my accounts that I think I'm going to need set up here. You'll notice I've got my accounting equation on top. Okay. And then I've got a couple asset accounts and you can kind of make these as you go. If you're doing this in Excel, you can just keep adding accounts in. Um, but I've got cash accounts receivable and computer equipment, which are all assets, accounts payable and notes payable for liabilities, common stock and retained earnings for equity. And then what I did is I put a sum at the bottom of each one of these. Okay. So that way it'll keep a running total for all my accounts. And then I also put in just to make sure that my, balance sheet is always in balance, right? To make sure my accounting equation is in balance. I did put in total assets, which are the, you know, the sum of the assets and then total liabilities plus equity, which is the sum of the four accounts on the right side of the equation. Okay. So that's just so you can kind of see where I'm coming from with this. And then I've got a list of transactions that we're going to analyze. Okay. So the first one, Kelly starts a business by investing $1,000 in exchange for common stock. So if you watched my, what is a transaction video, I say that you always receive something and you give something up. Okay. So remember that when you're doing this, you're always doing this from the perspective of the company. Okay. So Kelly starts a business by investing $1,000 in exchange for common stock. So don't think about what Kelly gave up. Think about what the company gave up and what the company is receiving. So what is the company receiving? Okay. Oh, and I'm going to format because I love to format. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make sure that this is dollars. Okay. All right. So the company is receiving $1,000 in cash. So I'm going to put that in. And, oh, let me format these two. I am like, I am all about the formatting with my spreadsheets. Um, I just, I like them to look nice. Um, and so that's like a big deal. Okay. Sorry about that. So the company receives a thousand dollars in cash and what is the company giving up? Okay. Well, the company is giving Kelly stock, right? So $1,000 in stock. So notice that my my accounting equation is in balance. Okay. I've got a thousand and a thousand. Very cool. Okay. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to you, right? This balances because a thousand on the left and a thousand on the right. And then, um, my assets and my, uh, liabilities and equity balance. Cool. Okay. All right. Let's do number two. Kelly purchases a computer for $1,200 on a three-year note. All right, so she's purchasing this for the business. Um, so the company is, what are they receiving? They're receiving a $1,200 computer. What is the company giving up? Well, they're giving up their right to $1,200 in the future, right? So that would be a note payable of $1,200. Everything's still in balance. Very good. Okay. Uh, Kelly purchases supplies with cash, $50. All right. So what is the company receiving? The company is receiving supplies. Okay. So now you might be thinking, okay, supplies expense. Ha ha. But I don't see supplies expense here. Okay. When you're analyzing transactions like this, um, everything is running through retained earnings directly. So I know that that's sometimes a little bit confusing, um, but essentially what we're going to do is instead of doing revenue and expenses, we are going to increase and decrease retained earnings based off of the transaction that's happening. So an expense, and I do kind of like this because what it does do is it makes you think about the impact of revenue expenses on retained earnings. Okay. So, um, Kelly purchases supplies with cash. So what are we getting? We're getting supplies. 
Okay. And that is making my retained earnings go down. What are we giving up? We're giving up cash. So it's making my cash go down. So notice that I put both of those in as negative numbers. Okay. One of the benefits of doing this in Excel is that Excel is going to make sure that my transactions in balance. So if I put this in as 50, notice I'm not in balance. Okay. I have to subtract on both sides. Okay. Um, Kelly purchases supplies on account $125. Okay. So let's see. So she's purchasing more supplies. So we know that that is going to make my retained earnings decrease, but how is she paying for it? She's paying for it on account. Um, she's going to pay that account. So that means I've got a liability. So I'm going to use accounts payable. Okay. So I'm using accounts payable because, um, I'm going to pay it later. If it was money I was going to receive from a customer, it would be accounts receivable. That's how I remember the difference between those two. Okay. All right. Um, Kelly purchases software with her debit card, $400. Okay. So let's think about your debit card for a second. So my debit card is linked to my checking account. That's not a credit card. Okay, so I'm purchasing software with my debit card. So that software, um, you know, depending on, so here's the thing, depending on what your threshold is, right? Um, and we'll talk about this more when we talk about assets, but essentially you have something called your capitalization threshold. Um, and also the thing you've got to look at with software, and I know this is kind of going a little bit deep, but how long are you going to use that software for? So I know typically in our business, we have a lot of annual software license, right? licenses, which means we're just using something for 12 months, which that means that because it's only a 12 month license, I'm just going to expense it. So you might call the software expense if you're going through, um, you know, doing this uh, for a client, if you're actually breaking it out into the expense accounts. All right. So I'm using my debit card, which means that it's not a liability. I'm actually paying for it with cash. So that's coming out of my cash account. So one thing I think is, is really important, and we don't really think about this when, you know, we're initially doing accounting like this, but essentially when we talk about cash, we're talking about the bank accounts, right? So we're talking about checking accounts or savings accounts. That's what cash means. In, a, in an accounting system, we would actually have um, an account set up for each one of these, okay? But typically when you're learning, especially in an intro accounting class, they just kind of refer to everything as cash. Um, and that is that would be referring to your bank accounts, okay? All right, Kelly does work for a client and gets paid immediately $2,300 in cash, okay? Um, which I just kind of answered that one, right? So if she gets paid immediately, that makes me think cash, right? Even if it's not there. So she's receiving $2,300 and that's because she did work for $2,300. So yay, look. So now if I look at my retained earnings, my retained earnings is now positive. She is making money, okay? Which is pretty awesome, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, and I'm sorry, you know, I just realized my transactions are out of balance. I made a mistake. Okay. Can you see where my mistake is? Let's see. This was okay. This is in balance. This is in balance. Ooh, this is not in balance. And you're saying, well, wait a minute, Kristen, with all the other ones, you know, we put, you know, if one was positive, they're both positive. If one was negative, they're both negative. But remember, these are on the same side of the equation, which means if one is negative, the other one must be positive. Ho oh, ho, look at that. And now I'm in balance again. Really, really important when you're doing this to go through and always be checking to make sure that you're in balance. Okay. Now, did I do that on purpose or was it an accident? Mm, you may never know. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that's why you have that check figure there, guys. You got to check that to make sure you stay in balance. Okay. Um, you know, even if I were doing this 
you know, this is why, like I said, I love doing this in Excel because Excel keeps it, the numbers going for me. Um, but even if I were going to do this by hand, you know, I'd always want to make sure that at the end I do all my totals and make sure everything balances. And if it doesn't go back through and, and check everything out. Okay. Kelly does work for a client and bills the client $1,700. So I didn't get paid immediately like I did in the last one. Um, I'm doing work for a client and I'm billing the client $1,700. So I'm doing work for a client, right? So that increases my retained earnings because revenue always uh, always increases my retained earnings. And then um, I'm not getting paid, but the the I now have kind of like an IOU, right, from the customer. So I have an asset. I'm going to receive the money later. So I have accounts receivable. Okay. And everything is still in balance. Um, so Kelly is going to pay back $300 on the loan. All right. So what am I getting? I'm getting $300 of loan relief, right? Where do we put that loan? Oh, that was the note payable for the computer, right? So I'm, that is going to decrease and then I'm paying it back. So my cash is also gonna decrease. Okay, cool. Um, Kelly pays for the supplies purchased on account. Okay, so remember we purchased these supplies up here for $125. And so we are going to pay that off and we're paying it off with cash. Okay, still in balance, there we go. Um, all right, Kelly pays herself a salary of $1,500. So that would be salary's expense. Expenses make my retained earnings go down and make my uh, cash go down. Hopefully Kelly has enough money to pay for all this stuff here. Let's see. We're going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Still in balance. Very good. And then Kelly takes a, oh, I spelled that wrong, huh? Dividend. Okay, uh, takes a dividend of $500. All right, so let's see. So a dividend reduces retained earnings. And let's see, and that is going to reduce my cash as well. Okay. My assets equal my liabilities plus equity. So that's good. So it doesn't guarantee that we put everything in the right place, right? But it does guarantee that the, that the um, balance sheet, right? Or my accounting equation balances, okay? So this is, this is what I have right now, okay? Um, after going through all the transactions. So the cool thing is we notice we do have a positive cash balance, which is good. Um, notice that we do have positive equity, right? So because this company just started, okay, um, there's no beginning balance in retained earnings. Our beginning balance was zero. If we had beginning balances, we would slot them in, okay, up at the top, and we'd use that to start our numbers with, okay? But because it's a brand new business, we don't have that. So the, if we did a balance sheet right now, okay, um, we would have $3,325 in assets. We would have $900 in liabilities, right? Cause the accounts payable balance is zero. And then we would have, uh, $2,425 in equity. Okay, so there you go. So there is how you analyze transactions using the accounting equation. Let me know if you have any questions about this and uh, I'll see you next time.